Why don't we stand together and let's open this time the word of prayer. I can't wait to share with you what God has put in our hearts. And we are so excited about this first Sunday. You know, we, we entered New Year at watch night service. Many of you are not here, but many of you were. But we entered into 2020 by grabbing it like that. I'm coming in. We weren't like, oh gosh, another year, I'm getting older. But we were like so excited about the great potential this year has for every. Do you believe that? And our theme is like phenomenal, far more. And same with all our churches in Klang and in other places. We grabbed it and we said, we are coming in. And I want you to really be intentional. Everybody say intentional. So you don't get off the, get off the cruise mode. Get off the autopilot, put it on manual, and start saying Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, every day is going to count. Don't tell other people what your goals are. Don't tell anyone. Let them tell you, hey, you look better this year. What have you been doing? I mean, since I saw you in January, and now I'm seeing you in March, have you been going to the gym? See, you never told anybody, now they are telling you, so don't say I'm going to I'm going I tell you what I'm going to I'm going to stop smoking by April. Don't do that. Look, I've been a pastor long enough to know that many people who made these kind of goals broke it. So keep your goals to yourself. Just every day be intentional. You're going to get better. You're going to get up earlier. You're going to read your Bible. You're going to pray. Amen. So Happy New Year to all of you. Let's grab 2020. Father, we thank you for this first Sunday, which is the start of many great Sundays that we will have in Jesus' name. Amen. And you may be seated. All right. Thanks, guys. I want to start a, a series. In fact, I started it some weeks ago about how God builds. All right. God is a builder when Jesus came into this world. He didn't come into the home of a fisherman or a farmer. He came into the home of a carpenter. And one time when he asked his disciples as he was coming close to the end of his ministry, he says, now guys, he said, who do, who do people say I am? Oh, some say you are Elijah. Some say you're John the Baptist came back from the dead. Some say, some say, some say. And then Peter blurted out and he said, you are the Christ. The Messiah, the Savior, the answer to the world. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, you are blessed because you have this revelation. So I want to start by reminding you that everything that God builds, He builds upon a revelation. Now if you know this year who you are, then no matter what the storms of life may bring against you, your marriage, your finances, no matter what, and storms will come, but because you have a revelation that God who began a good work in you, what he starts, he will finish. What God builds, he'll protect. Now, when you have that revelation, nobody, no bad news, no social media, whatever they're saying in the world, can shake you because God is the one that is building you now. And Jesus said, now upon this revelation, that you understand that I am the Christ, the Son of the living God, because you, you got that. You, you're not a Christian because you go to church, because it's a cool thing to do. Everybody knows what being a Christian looks like. If I wore a cross, change my name, carry a Bible, go to church, say the right Christian words, therefore I'm a Christian. But really, being a Christian is that you have an deep down inside your heart that you know, Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. When Jesus said, now upon this revelation, I will build my church. So everything that he builds, he builds on a revelation. So the first thing is in your life that you want to have is to have a clear cut, not I don't know, I'm confused, some say, some say, but I know in my heart. And you can only know that if you open your heart to Jesus and by the Holy Spirit, he will give you a revelation. Now starting with that revelation, I want to talk about other things that Jesus is going to build. And this year, your life is not going to be accidental, it's not going to be mediocre and average, it's going to be wonderfully built because you invite God to build and get involved in the building of your life. How many of you want that to happen? 
So the second way God builds, which I want to talk about today, is relationally. He builds revelationally. He builds by revelation, you understand? Revelations when, okay, I got it. It's not just my father's God. It's not just going to church. I know Jesus Christ is my savior. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I know my Bible's real. I don't understand all about it when I read, but I know the Holy Spirit who wrote and gave you the Bible, he's going to be your teacher. So I'm going to be a student. I'm going to be the student the rest of my life. I'm going to be teachable. Can you say amen? Now, because you have that revelation, now the second way that God builds is God builds you relationally. Turn to somebody and say, relationally. Because there are a lot of Christians, I'll tell you, they'll go to church every Sunday, some on Christmas and Easter, but they still go to church, but they never get built. So their life is a blah, it's boring. And you don't want your life to be beige. Beige is like, I'm not shining, I'm not brown, I'm not black, I'm not blue. I'm just beige. Who wants a life that is beige, right? Okay? So you want your life to be effervescent, colorful, full of life, energetic, kinetic, alive. And so we all know that if you are going to be growing as a Christian, you cannot grow on your own. Because God has only two families. One is the natural family. That's where you all came from, right? Whether your family is good or bad, whether they are right or wrong, you were set into a family. How many of you know what I'm talking about? All right? You were connected through a seed. Hello? The stock didn't bring you. You're not Dumbo. I hope you're not dumb, but you're not Dumbo because in the story of Dumbo, the elephant with big ears, the stock brought Dumbo. But we all know that we all came because a man and a woman were connected. Right or wrong, good family or bad family, we were brought into this natural world by a connection. You follow with me? Now, in that connection, if you are blessed, praise God, you have got a wonderful father, mother, who affirmed you from the time you were a child, you are a blessed person. But the rest of us were not that lucky. So, but, you know, thank God that God came into our lives and now we have the born-again experience. So your family may be yucks, but that's okay. You're not the only one that has inherited a troubled, dysfunctional. And as a pastor, I meet loads of people like that. Well, welcome to the real world. That's the natural world. But then God also has a spiritual family. Are you with me? That's where you meet Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, unless a man is born again. Everybody say born again. And he says, you are born again, not by the natural means, but in the same way, but by the Spirit. When you accept Jesus Christ, the incorruptible seed of God, just like in the natural, your dad's seed connected to your mom's womb, in the supernatural or in the spiritual, when you accept Jesus Christ, the incorruptible seed of God is planted into your spirit. Your spirit was dead alienated, outcast, enemy with God. But when you accepted Christ, you now became a child of the living God. But you cannot grow alone because there are a lot of Christians, they are Christian. If they die, they'll go to heaven. But on earth, their, life are very, is, is, their lives are very mediocre. They are not growing. They are not producing. So God puts you in a spiritual family called the local church. Now, I, the Bible tells me, I, and I know myself, and I've been a Christian now 45 years, I know that if there's anything that's good that's going to come out of my life, it's never going to come through me. It's going to come because I'm connected to my spiritual family. So the Bible gives us many metaphors, many pictures of what you really are. And once you get that, you will begin to grow. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13 to 18, he says, now listen, he's talking about you. For by one spirit, everybody say one spirit. We were all baptized into one body. Say one body. Whether you're Greeks or Pleaks or Greeks or Jews or whatever you might be, all were made to drink of that one spirit. But now God has said, everybody say has said. Now, I'm going to give you a bit of English lessons in a little while. But let's look at the Bible. God has said. He has said. Who said? God said. 
Just like in the natural family, you did not choose your daddy and mommy. You were set. Some of you are wishing that your parents were millionaires, but you got an all average family. But you were set there. That's your family. I go to birthday parties, weddings, I see people, dysfunctional families, some are broken as, broken as hell. And they fight and hate each other, but because of a birthday or because of a wedding, they come together. And I say to them, look, no matter what, it's your family, right? In the natural family. Well, God gave us a wonderful chance to experience a spiritual family. And again, in this family, it's not perfect, but he has set you there. God has set every member, each one of them, in the body as who pleases. Come on, read your Bible. As who pleases? As he pleases. God is pleased that you're set in a body. Are you with me? You may not be pleased with your natural family, but you are set in there. So you were stuck to your mother. She gave birth to you. You were still stuck in that family. Then you grew up. Then you found a girlfriend. Then you got married. But in the same, in the sense, you know, you, she's still your mom and he's still your dad. That's a natural family. Now God has put you in a spiritual family and he's building a spiritual house and he is growing you as long as you are set in that family. First Corinthians Chapter 12, verse 26 and 27. If one member suffers, this is if you understand family, hello, if you understand church life, because some people just drift in and drift out, or they'll move from one family to, you don't do that in the natural family. You can't say to your father and mother, your brother, your sister, I don't like your face. I'm just going to stay with Achong's family. They are nicer. You know, they are richer and they are wealthier. And so I'm just going to move to, do you do that in the natural I mean, you can, but they won't accept you as a family member. They'll tolerate you. They'll think you're an orphan. You think you're, they'll think you're a poor thing, this child. So you can't do that in the natural, can you? And so a lot of people think that they can do that in the spiritual family as well. Cannot. The Bible says very clearly, are you with me? God has said. And so it says, if you're set in that family, if one member suffers, all members suffer with it. And if one member is honored, all members rejoice with it. Now, you are the body of Christ. Christ is the head and he is the foundation. Listen carefully, this will help you because if you don't get it, you'll, you'll, you'll be a drifter. You'll go to places where God has not set you. You will produce nothing. People will tolerate you. They will welcome you. They love your tithe. They love your finances. But that's it. You can't produce anything because that's not where God has set you. So you find people who go from church to church to church to church. You find, you know, the church is already functioning. And they like you being there because it adds to the numbers. But you can't produce. I've seen that happen. They've got, I've seen that. I've seen their photos on Facebook. The same group that left that church. But they've gone to this church. They're not producing anything. Because the church is already producing on its own. But they welcome you. So I want you to know, today, you can make C3 Kuala Lumpur your home church. And if you haven't made that decision yet and you're a drifter, I can't help you unless you catch this revelation. It's got to be revealed to you just like if you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, that's a revelation. I can preach about Jesus. I can't reveal Jesus to you. You can hear sermons about Jesus, but you will never know the power and the reality of Jesus Christ unless the Holy Spirit, you let the Holy Spirit do something in your life. Okay, thank you for that very loud, enthusiastic response. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 16 says, From whom the whole body joined and held together for every joint. Everybody say joint. And joint is not a cigarette with marijuana in it. It's not that joint. It's talking about all the joints. It says, and every joint supplies. Everybody say supplies. This is not the Chinese way of saying surprise. This is supplies. All right? It's okay. Supplies! No. Surprise, supplies. All right, this is every joint. Listen to me. You are a joint. And you're meant to supply. So when you become a part of the church, you are not a consumer. You are a supplier. Your human body functions and grows and becomes strong if your body and all its members in the body is supplying. Your kidney has to supply. Your bladder has to supply. 
Even that little thing that hangs in our body called the appendix, which people want to remove, had a purpose in there somewhere. Am I correct? We've got doctors in the house. I want you to know that in this church, nobody can say, I don't need you. I don't like you. Why? Because every joint must supply. My eye cannot say, I don't like my nose because it's flat and it's upward. I want an American nose. The hand cannot say to the kidneys, I don't like you. Or the kidney cannot say to the face, I don't like you. I'm hidden in your backside somewhere. Whereas I want to be up front. You understand in the natural, it doesn't, do you understand? Hello, am I speaking English or? So in the same way in the body of Christ, every joint is meant, listen, to supply and it is equipped and every part is working properly. It makes the body to grow so that it builds up itself in love. Let me listen carefully. The growth power of your body is in your joints. If your joints are not functioning, the growth of your body will die. Your body will be stunted. Now listen, there are some people who don't feel they belong to any church. Are they Christian? Of course they are. If they die, they're going to heaven? Of course, because salvation is through Jesus. But I'll tell you, on earth, they're pathetic. The church can't grow. The church is hindered. Or their area of ministry is not growing because they are not supplying. Everybody supply. You have got to be a supplier. Every part of the church body has got to go. Imagine if C3KL, if all of us were functioning the way we are supposed to function, we will begin to grow. If you're not growing and adding to the church, then I want you to imagine a piece of land that has just got a concrete slab, the foundation. But that's all it is. So in order for it to be a building, it has got to be joined and built together. And so God, the Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, listen to the word of God, says that Jesus is the solid foundation. The foundation is not Peter. The foundation is not Mary. The foundation is not some apostle. The foundation of the church has and always will be Jesus Christ. So the Bible is clear. The rock of salvation, the foundation, it says is Jesus. But he says, but you as lively stones, you as lively stones are built as a spiritual house. Now the church is not the building as you know, but even the building needs stones to hold it together. You can't see the stones because it's plastered, but there are stones and bricks that are joined together to hold this huge building on which we have one floor to ourselves. So the body of Christ, this church, is a spiritual house. It tells us, it, so, so we are not nice if we have lights and we have a nice LED screen and all of that music, fantastic. But that's not the church. All of that is to help us to be a spiritual house, to offer worship and sacrifices to God, to be relevant in our world today, to connect with people, to be alive, living stones. You see, we were once dead stones. Without Christ, without connecting to the body of Christ, you're just a stone. Yeah, you look stone. Yeah, you're just, just a brick. That's all. But when you're connected, the Bible says when we are connected, we become the spiritual house. We become lively stones. I like that word, lively stones, because it uses that word kinetic, energetic, active, dynamic. God wants you to be connected. You understand? So that the life that is in you can grow. So, listen carefully. This is your church home. This church is not your choice. Just like your natural family was not your choice. This is God's choice. So I'm not free to go where I want, do what I want. I, I, I have a spiritual home. I'm responsible for my brothers and sisters. And because I feel connected, and I choose to connect with you guys, men and women in the body of Christ, 
I am built in my life. Wherever I go, I prosper. Everything I desire to do, God helps me to find success. Because that's the way God builds people's life. Brick by brick connected together. So, listen, here's a little English class. The word sit is an active verb. You are sitting now in church. The word set that we read in the Bible just now is an inactive word. Sit is something you do. Set is something God does. You know the word set means he plans and he put, puts it into action. He's fixed about it. So set is something done for you and God has set you in the body and you know where you're set, so you sit. But he has, if he hasn't set you somewhere, you can't sit there. But you sit here and I sit here because I'm set. You understand? You sit because you're set. Set as in S-E-T, not S-A-T. Once you begin to have that revelation that the Bible, this is not Pastor Joe's idea. This is not just a pastor telling you, I want you to stay in church. This is how God says, I will build. And that's why you find people who've been married 20 years, 30 years, and more. They realize that it's not that they like each other all the time. Come on, you just have to ask them realistically. And if they are real, they'll say, no, we, we don't feel lovey-dovey all the time. But they have a revelation that when they stood before the minister and they said, I do, in sickness or in health, for richer or for poorer, for better times or for worse, I do, except this person. They have a revelation. So they are not in and out of marriages. They are not in and out. If you have been in and out of marriages, it's not to condemn you. I want you to know you can start a brand new life in 2020. And that goes through your relationship with your children, your spouse, and even in the place you work. You know you're set in your office. You have a responsibility. Somebody trusted you and employed you. You don't go around working for other people. You may help other people, your friends, with a bit of tip here and there. But you know you are set. You're answerable to your company. If you want to succeed and have a lifetime job, you're not job hopping. Who wants your res Look at your resume. Oh, I've been here a few months. I've been there a few months. Who wants to hire you? In the same way with our marriages and in our life. So men and women stay together. It's not like their marriages are perfect, but they have a revelation that they have been set there when they said to God, they realize they're talking to the presence of God. Psalms 127, I love this. Psalms 127 verse 1. Unless the Lord build the house, they that labor, many of you are also laboring, you're working, you're going to work, you're looking for your studies, you're studying, you're going to college, you're looking for your future. You're trying to build your life, but unless the Lord is building you, won't last, whatever you're trying to build. And so you find many buildings that have been built on wrong foundation. We find in Malaysia because it's the, the rain starts coming in and, and the sinkholes, they call it. My goodness, we've had some horrific sink roads in our country where the roads just, just collapse. Because water underneath, look, the storms will come. And if you're not built on the right, right foundation, then the sinkholes in life will come and it all goes in, we've seen examples of that. So here it says, unless the Lord build the house, they that labor are laboring in vain that build it. Unless the Lord keeps the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. What God builds, God protects. Some of you are scared about your future in 2020. You're scared about your future in 2019. You're scared about your future all the time because, you know, we live in a very, very volatile world, yeah? But you want your future to be rock solid. You make sure your foundation is Jesus Christ and his word. Get a revelation there. Then when you enter into relationship in marriage and so on and so forth, you'll find it'll be bedrock solid because the storms will come and other foundations are wobbly. And so we, we pray for people, but 
Lord, we pray they won't end up in a broken relationship, the children, innocent children. You don't want to build something where at the end of your many years of life, my God, the children are hurt. You know, people, relatives are hurt. We don't want our life to be remembered like that. We want our lives to be fruitful, bearing much fruit, and going far more further than what you could ever think or dream about. Can somebody say amen? So once you understand who Jesus is, you also understand that he is building his house. Ephesians 4, 16, you saw just now, every joint, just like in your natural body, your joint has to supply to sustain that human body and its growth. It's also in the body of Christ. So imagine, church, if all of us, if all of us, every one of you, think about connecting. Connect with other people. Connect with non-Christian. Connect with your brothers and sisters in Christ here. Connect about making plans. Today, in our Clang Church, there was connection throughout the week with people who were coming to our church, new people to connect, connecting to non-Christian. Vans were going out to pick people to our services back there. So the first service, I was there at the beginning, and it was already filled before the worship started. People are connecting. If this church is going to grow, what are you supplying into this church? Some people supply nothing. They've supplied all their life, their Christian life, and so they're average. They haven't grown. God wants you to grow. He wants you to be healthy, and he wants this body to grow in strength and in faith. Now, what we started to do this year, or we plan to do this year in all our churches, and even in our language services, is that we want people to come every Sunday. I want you to bring people, bring them in. And because many of you have problems going to a connect group out there, we understand because of time, some have difficulty going for tuition, and children. And so another day or another night out on a weekday is difficult for some people. So what we decided to do in Jesus' name is to make our services more exciting. We want you to right here, right now, turn around to your connect group and your connect group leader is going to explain to you a little bit and then you will have a little discussion about what was just shared. You can share your opinion about connecting to church or connecting to your family or whatever you want to do. But that's what we are going to be doing. Some of you don't know where you're going to be sitting. Don't worry. The pastors can see you and they will connect. And as you connect and share your needs, be real. You know, I'm having this problem. I'm having, and we're just going to do that for half an hour. And then we're going to pray. And then we're going to worship God. Then you can go to the cafeteria like what we always do. And you can share. You can continue sharing that. But to me, this is the most exciting thing because we don't want you to hear just nice messages. You can go on any podcast and hear the best messages better than your pastor preaching all the time. But... Hearing good messages and being informed and being inspired will not help you grow. It is when you apply what you hear, the word of God is saying. Jesus said, he that hears the word and does it is like a man who builds his house on a solid rock and the storms will come and the winds will blow, but he will not fall because he was a hearer and a doer of the word. My prayer and my wish for every single one of you is that your life will blossom. That you will get out of that Christian, sim, you know, that Christian, uh, what do they call those? <coughs> Aircraft pilots do that. Simulation. <coughs> you know, <coughs> when to give, when to say amen. A Christian simulation. They only know it like that, by simulation. But in actuality, they don't know what to do. So I want us all right now, get up and turn to your, come on, Sam, move them around. You all know what to do, right? Everybody got, where's your connect group? Connect group leaders, can I see who you are? All right, get, make sure that all your connect groups are together. <coughs> turn around and your connect group leader will tell you very briefly that we want everybody to talk. Everybody to talk. Fantastic. I love this. Don't go away. The church is not over. Hello. The service is here. Why do you have to walk out now? No, no, no. You nobody moves when the service goes on. Please respect the order, all right? Get back. 
Everybody sit down. Find up, find your connect group. All right. So this is what you're going to be discussing, something like this. What did you get out of today's message? Look up there on the screen. Why is it not possible to grow without being connected? Please go ahead and discuss. <clears throat>